So good news. Well, actually, I wouldn't actually call it good news. I don't believe one console should have exclusives over another. It's stupid, but hey. For us Xbox players, we will get all exclusives so far PlayStation have seen since release. Well, maybe not all, but we get some. But hey guys, before we get into the video, I want to give back to my subscribers. So every month I'm giving away a fully customizable controller. To win, simply like this video and drop a comment down below and enter the giveaway via the Gleam link within the video description. Fast, easy and legit. Good luck, you sexy bastards. So what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. So yes, us Xbox users come September 4th, we'll get the Lake of Shadows and the Insight Terminus Strikes, the exclusive Sniper Rifle, the Borealis, the PvP maps, the Retribution and Wormhaven, the City Apex Ship, and an armor set for each subclass, as you can see on screen now. That's about damn time if you ask me. A whole year is a long time to wait for a few said items, Personally, I don't agree with exclusives going to one console over another. It would be the same, in my opinion, would be the same if it was Xbox getting them over PlayStation. I think everybody should get them at the same time. But hey, it's business and people that business continues because when the Forsaken releases September 4th, PlayStation users get a whole new host of exclusives. Well, I'm pretty sure will be for another year too. You will receive one gear set per class, a new ship and an exotic weapon. Some sources also also say a strike while other sources don't mention a strike but yeah people you're probably getting an exclusive strike too the exotic weapon also at the moment i don't believe we know what it is but considering the borealis wasn't exactly a crappy weapon i'd expect something of unique in qualities to the borealis or even better maybe some kind of exotic bow That'd be pretty cool. Well, it'll be pretty cool for you PlayStation users, but who knows? As soon as I get more info on this, I will have you guys covered here, right here on my channel. So moving on and on to Faction Rallies, people. Now this returns next week, June 26th, and it has been confirmed that you will be able to pick up where you last left off. So if you choose the same faction, say you was Dead Orbit the first time, and you choose Dead Orbit the second time, your rank will be the same. Now I don't know why you'd choose the same faction unless there is loot you didn't actually obtain. Then it would make sense, but hey if you did reach that rank 50 and got the catalyst, I'm pretty sure you're going to pledge to another faction. I definitely am and this time I'm picking Dead Orbit people. Because first time I picked Future Walko and I was let down by the sunshot. So yeah people it returns next week. So get your grinding boots on. Also guys with the upcoming update 1.2.3 we are getting some big exotic armor changes. We have three exotics for each class I believe. Starting with the Hunter, Lucky Raspberry, increased chance to fully recharge your arc bolt grenade and arc bolt grenade hits. Ridiculous! Guarantees a recharge on getting a full chain that hits four targets. So that's pretty cool. So this is a decent change in my opinion, the Lucky Raspberry I've never really used, not going to lie to you guys. Moving on to the Stump EE5. Increased benefits when using Strafe Jump and Triple Jump. Now they state the usage rate of the Stump EE5 in the Crucible was fairly good, but since it mostly affected High Jump, people were somewhat pigeonholed if they wanted to change their air game, so the other Double Jump variants were tweaked to have more impact. I agree with them people, the Stump EE5s was something I used for about half a game and that was in pvp because there's so much better exotics but hey if you're going for more mobility then the stump ee5s do seem like a good exotic now the young ahamkara spine removed marking functionality improved the tripmine grenades blast radius and throw speed and made it so your tripmine grenades are harder to destroy solar ability hits now grant some tripmine grenade energy so that's pretty epic. The tripmine grenades, in my opinion, were great in Destiny 1, where they used to one hit ya. Now it takes two hits to kill a Titan. Yeah, I ain't too sure, to be honest. We'll see, people, we'll see. I'll definitely give them a try, though. So moving on to the Titan and the ACD slash zero feedback fences. Now grants few conductor stacks on melee hits instead of kills. Damn, few conductor now grants stacking melee damage resistance. So that's pretty cool. The Doom Fang Pulsions. Void melee kills now grant more super energy. Shield throw hits now extend the duration of your super. Gives you reason to use a Sentinel subclass in my opinion. I mean I don't see anybody using it. I mean to me it's a massive disappointment. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The Doom Marchers. Reduce the time to activate the linear actuators while you are sprinting to 1.5 seconds. Down from 5 seconds. Jesus. Increase the damage of the chain lightning effect plus 17 PvP, plus 440 in PvE. Damn! Monstrous, people, monstrous. 
fair play to you Titans, moving on to the Warlock, the Crown of Tempests. Collapse the total number of stacks of Conduction Tines to 3, with the same total effect. And each stack of Conduction Tines lowers the upkeep cost of Storm Trance. They state, Nazarek's Sin and this exotic were quite similar, so we pushed harder on this exotic for Stormcrawlers who want to invest heavily in ability use. Warlocks also don't have many exotics that modify their supers, and not receiving the full benefit of Conduction Tines during Storm Trance was a little disheartening, so we added a benefit during the super's duration to elevate that. Okay, so moving on to the Karnstein Armlets. Removed melee hit effects, resilience, mobility, and target highlighting. Melee kills now instantly heal you, then grant continuous healing for 8 seconds? What? Really? Damn! Melee kills instantly heal you and continue healing you for 8 seconds? Really, Bungie? I'm not gonna lie though, I suppose Warlocks needed something like this. I mean, I've literally just made my Warlock just the past few days. It's a level 3 at the minute, people. I'm getting there slowly. I just felt no need in using the Warlock. I mean, but yeah. Seeing exotics like this and the changes being made, damn. Moving on to the Starfire Protocol. Empowering Rift weapon damage hits now grant fusion grenade energy 20%. So that's pretty cool, also, people. So, some pretty decent changes coming, people. And to be honest, I don't even look twice at most exotic armors, as to me, they are pretty useless. But seeing changes like these being put in place, I'm optimistic about the future of exotics actually feeling exotic because most don't now. Most ain't exotic, in my opinion. So your changes like this definitely reassure me about the future. And people, we have come to the end of the video. Not a long one, just covering things I've missed over the past day or so. But guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leaving a like truly helps me out. Thanks, as always, for stopping by. If you're new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, people, I'll see you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand. But you and I will carry on. We never get it right.